guys, it is Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. I have one that's requested a lot of the Metallica that is left for me to cover because I've done a bunch. Um, hit the lights, uh, the, day, the opening track off of Kill 'Em All. So we're going to go through that one all through it, all the riffs, all the lead breaks, the solos, lots of fun. Um, so before I do it, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Ring the notification bell so you know when I release a new video. And uh, please check out my Guitar Academy. You'll see the link in the description. It's at guitarlessons365.com. It's got all my guitar courses on uh, technique, improvisation, guitar tone, ear training, theory, all everything. So please go check it out. All right, so let's jump into this real quick. Uh, we are in standard tuning, so nothing, uh, nothing difficult there. And we have this intro to the track that just starts with just kind of, kind of, kind of fades in. Fill. All right, so nothing different there. It's just off an E power chord. Just kind of, then I kind of buy this. Then kind of just the same kind of strumming off of an F sharp power chord. Second fret. There's a little pick slide. And then we get to the main riff of the track, which sounds like this. All right, so now um, it sounds like uh, as, as it's kind of doing that little opening, there's some hits there. So it sounds like maybe uh, Kirk is doing that, just some A power chords on those hits. Um, and then we have James up here going. So there's, it's kind of, it starts out the first time you hear it, it's just kind of, you just kind of hear it. And just kind of just like the open A string. And then it just kind of some uh, kind of alternate picking there on the uh, muted A string. Then we have this. The, which is just the fifth fret on the D and the G, then seven, then the open D and the G, and then the back of the fifth. So we have, so we have this. And then we have this little fill there. Little, little lick there. So that's a pull off from seven to five on the D string over to um, seven on the A string, back to the five on the D. And then you're gonna hammer, real quick hammer from five to seven on the A. So we have this. And then we start the riff over, you're gonna hear that first chord. So it's the, you hear the open A string along with the, the uh, fifth fret on the D and the G together. And then he has this little, just in the very beginning, he does this little, little variation on it, which is a quick, quick uh, play this from the A, hammer six, seven, and then jump over to the seventh fret on the G string and do a kind of a slow bend. So we have this. And then from here, you kind of play it like you do the rest of the song. So, it, that, so the rest of the song, he doesn't do that little. He just does that every time. All right, so from there, we get to the uh, verse, which looks like this. Thank you. 
When we get to this E, it's kind of really the pre-chorus. So I'll stop there. So it's basically just kind of, kind of a little jumpy rhythm there from the D power chord off the fifth fret of the A string. And then the G power chord off the third fret of the low E string. So kind of back and forth between those two. Come down. Actually, just go D, G, to the, uh, back to the D, and then we do this which is three, two on the A, over to three on the low E. And then it goes back to that main riff. And then we go back to the D, G, D again. So what we do here, uh, leading into the pre-chorus is we just play that, we go back to that main riff there during the verse. We usually did it twice, but now we're just going to do it once. And then from right there, we have the pre-chorus, looks like this. All right, so that's a quick little pre-chorus. It's just uh, E power chord there, you can do the low E string in there too. And then we have Three, two, three. Three, two, three on the low E string. Then over to three, two on the A string, back to three on the low E. It's a little six note uh, bass line. All right, and that leads us to the chorus, which sounds like this. All right, so it's kind of a unique feel to it. Uh, it's pretty cool. So we're going to start off the A power chord. And then you're going to hit the third fret on the low E string. You're going to slightly bend it if you want. And then back to the A power chord twice like this. So after you've done that much, so you just repeat it. The A's, G, A, G, A. For at this point, we go play a couple power chords. We play the third fret, the C power chord off the third fret of the A string. And then back to that power chord, the G power chord, the third fret of low E. And then we're back to the riff. So you do that twice, and then the third time, a little bit different. Actually, no. So you do it three times. One, two, three, and then the, when you start the fourth time, you just kind of cut it off before you, you just do this. So you just basically hit those A's twice. So one, two, one, two, and, that, and that's when it stops, kind of stops in the middle of nowhere. I know it feels like that. And then it goes back to, we have our first lead uh, break, uh, Kirk Hammett's first lead break here. This is at the one minute and 21 second mark. Now over this, uh, under, the, under this uh, is the main riff. So you've got that going on underneath it. And you've got Kirk doing this. Sounds like this. All right, so it's kind of some bluesy stuff actually. So we're up here. An A minor pentatonic here. So we're just basically going to do this common blues lick. So it's the bend of this 19th fret there on the G string. And then we're going to play um, uh, the 17th fret on the high E string. And then pull off 20 to 17 on the uh, B string. So we this. So basically, do that three times. And then we do this, which is just playing 20, pulling off 20, 17 on the high E, then 20, 17 on the B. So we have that, basically the fourth time we play that. All right, now we go back to that same uh, blues lick we did before, but this time you just do it once. 
And then back to that lick that we played last, which was a kind of pull off from the 20 to 17s on both the strings. So, so far we have this. Three times with the blues lick. Then that little two string pull off lick. Then once with the blues lick. And then once with that pull off lick again. So. And then kind of kind of resolve. You kind of resolve it down there. And then we do this little uh, blues lick here, which which is just kind of a slight bend at the 19th fret on the G. And then hammering on 17 to 20, pull back off the 17. Do it a few times. And then just do a bend at the 20th fret on the high E string. And then we just. Now some of these blues looks, like I said, they're just kind of like going for it. So really getting it note for note. I mean, you can get the the patterns down that he's using, which is which is kind of seven kind of trill legato work between 17 and 20 on the high E, and then 17 to 20 on the B, and then uh, pulse that bend and release there on the uh, the the 19th fret of the G string. So we have this. All right, so then we're back to the verse. So we still have the same verse, same pre-chorus, same chorus again. Uh, so nothing new there in the rhythm guitar work. Uh, and we get to lead break number two, once again, over the main riff. Uh, so lead break number two happens at the one minute and 56 second mark, and it looks like this. All right, still, still in A minor pentatonic stuff. So we're gonna start with some bends. So bending at the 20th fret on the B string, up a whole step, and then grabbing that unison note of it here at the uh, 17th fret on the high E string. So he did it like three or four times, and then we have, he does the bend at the uh, 19th fret there on the G string. And then you still grab that top note. So it... Like that. And then he goes back to doing the bend on the B string. And then back on the G. So we kind of got a lot of that going on at first. And then we're just kind of doing one of those kind of legato y stuff between 17 and 20 on the B and the high. And then when he gets down to the G string, he starts picking. So you just kind of start picking. So kind of palm mute it. So we're just going to alternate to pick 19, 17 on the G, 19, 17 on the D, over 19 on the A. So this. Then we go back up 19, 17, 19 on the D. And then here he starts slowing it down. Just kind of slows it down there. The 19, 17, 15 on the A string. And end it there at the 17th on the uh, A string. So we had this little, little kind of like. See, I kind of slowed it down. We go, so I go. It's kind of, it's, that, so when you get down the A string, you can uh, chill out a little bit. All right, so that is, uh, let me just play through that lead break one more time. All right, so then we go through the same um, verse, pre-chorus, and chorus, except, uh, so the third time you hear the chorus, it's a little bit longer. Um, we go through, a, we play through the riff a full four times and then put a little tail on it. So it looks like this. So basically do the riff full four times and that's that ends the riff, right? So, so that's one time. So you play that four times and then we just basically end it with this A power chord 
and then that G power chord, which takes us to the bridge. Uh, pretty simple to play. Sounds like this. And then that takes us to the, the solo rhythm, which I'll cover in a second. So it's pretty simple. What we're doing is he's kind of really digging in the notes here. We're playing the open A string and the seventh fret on the D together. Hit those four times. And then we play the fifth fret on the D and the G together. And then back to four more hits on those, the open A and the seven. And then we play, instead of the double stops at the 5th fret on the D and the G, we had the 7th fret on the D and the G. So we have this. And then back. Fives. And then we have this little... Alright, so that is uh, how Hetfield plays it. I know you can do... Which I'll do that the very last time I play it, but Hetfield actually plays it like this. So, you know, who cares? So, so it's 7-5 on the D string. And then play 7-6-5 on the A. Over to the 8th fret there on, on the low E string. So we're going to do that four times, and then we get to the, um, the rhythm for the solo. So let me play that first before I show you the solo. So this is Hetfield's part during the solo. the end of the, the, the track. So basically we're just playing this the power chord here at the seventh fret of the low E string. Kind of hit, hit it and then kind of uh, alternate pick muted on the low E string. Then jump over to the power chord on the, uh, the D power chord at the fifth fret of the A string. Then back to this B power chord. And then you're gonna play the E power chord. So we have this. Back to the B, and back to that D power chord, and then we have that little, which is the exact same thing we did here before, just two frets higher. So you do that B part, so it's, everything's gone up to B minor now. Um, so you do the B riff eight times. I think I did it eight times when I performed. That's kind of daydreaming. I don't know. I did it pretty close to eight times. So it's eight times though. And then we go to the A version of the room. So it's just kind of in the open A string and then hitting the, uh, those double stops at the fifth fret of the D and the G and then back to the A and then the seventh fret on the D and the G. Back. So five, so this. And 
and then that same lick, and then back to the riff again. Now, when we get so we're playing the second time, the A riff, that ending we're just going to extend and play it three times. <laughs> And that's like I said, the last time I played, instead of playing the note here, you can do it in this third note on the A, and then so it just gets, takes you to that A chord, A power chord, a little smooth. You see how it kind of slows down as you go, kind of a bluesy thing. And then just kind of triple up, pick that, and then there's a couple hits to end it. All right, so let me go back now and play, show you uh, Kirk Hammett's, it's a long solo too. So I'm gonna play the solo for you real quick and then I'll go through it uh, basically uh, phrase by phrase. So here we go. <laughs> So that is going to take a while to get through. So let me just start here. We're gonna, I'm going to kind of break it down. Like so, we have like a that B riff that we were doing. So basically, I'm going to show you like each, and it's like kind of like the solo is breaking broken into those sections. So it's basically really kind of ten sections. So that first section is this. All right, so um, that's gonna obviously there's a, a little wah pedal mostly here at the beginning. I think you can really hear it. So he's kind of kicking a wah pedal, kind of going, kind of um, slowly bringing it in. Uh, you know, changing the, the EQ frequency. But we have basically a bend of the ninth fret and then a hammer from seven to ten on the B. Pull back off the seven. So it's kind of like the lick we did earlier. So it's just that repeated. All right, so you do that about 874 times, and then you get to this. So that's gonna be pulling off 10 to seven on the high E string, and then you're gonna pull off nine to seven on the high. And then over to the ninth fret on the B string. And then back to that seven on the high E. So we have this. Then you're gonna pull off nine to seven, 10 to seven, and back to nine to seven. Back to that nine on the B string, and then back to the seven. So we have this so far. Then you're just gonna end it by pulling off 10 to 7 on the uh, uh, high E string. And then into a bend there at the 10th fret on the high E string. So all together. All right, now we have another, we're in B minor, uh, pentatonic here. We're gonna do another kind of run, which it's one of those licks too that uh, you can emulate it pretty well, and so could he, but he's not gonna do it the exact same way every time. It's kind of a, kind of a random collection of licks is really what he's doing. Um, so it kind of sounds like this. <laughs> 
So that's just down the B minor scale. So let's just get the notes first. So we just can play uh, 10, 7, you know, if you know the basic minor pentatonic. If you know that much all the way down to the A string, you're pretty much there. So that 10, 7 on the high E and B, and then 9, 7 across to the A. Then we're going to shift down to the next position of uh, B minor pentatonic. We're going to put down the A here, and then play 7, 5. So those are the notes on the, the, so across the, the uh, form. So what he's doing... So he really kind of does a lick like this across the skit. Kind of that kind of stuff, which is, you can literally do a lick like this, like just kind of pulling off uh, 10 to 7 on the high E string, then over to 10 on the B, and then back to 7. So that's kind of a four note lick. You started by doing it a couple times on the top two strings. And then start taking it across the board. Until you get to the note, the, the key note, where it's the, uh, the seventh fret there on the uh, low E string. So it kind of sounds like he's doing something like that. Just have fun with that lick on the way down. And when you get to that, you kind of resolve it there at the seventh fret, and then you go back up by starting on the fifth fret, hammer five seven, and then five seven on the A, slide back under the nine, and you're back in that same position that we do doing before. And he's doing licks kind of like stuff like that. It's kind of random stuff, just. Kind of basic pentatonic licks, but just played at warp speed. So I'm just kind of doing something like that. Hammer on 7 and 9, up to 7 on the G, over to 9 on the D, and then pull it up, pull off 9 to 7 on the G, over to 9 on the D, and back to 7. So it's really, you don't have to get enough. Room. And that goes into that bend there on the uh, G string. So once again, don't try to get these legs note for note all the time. It's just it's really not how it was written. All right, the next phrase or section looks like this. All right, so that's going to be... That bend at the 17th fret on the B string into the 14th fret there on the on the high E string. So you do that twice. And then you're going to pull off 17 to 14 on the high E string. And then we get to this repeated lick, which is very common. That he does this a lot in a lot of his solos. So we have pulling off 17 to 14 on the high E string, then 19 to 14, then back to 17, 14. So we have and then over to the 17th on the B, and then back to that 14th fret on the high E string. So you're going to do that lick, that pattern, three times. So that comes out of... So you saw that I threw an extra one in there. We have that, and then we start the actual lick. And then we're And then it does a lot of those kind of kind of, kind of legato y between uh, 14 and 17 on the G and the B into a bend there at the uh, actually the think might go the oblique bends there, right? So that's just kind of the uh, 17th fret there on the B and then the 16th fret there on the G and then bend up that note on the G string. All right, so all together. All right, then we go way up for the next lick. Um, still in B minor, so it's like this. 
So that is kind of similar to this. Uh, look that we did there, just an octave higher. So you're gonna start with a bend of the 22nd fret. And then once again, don't get, you know, tr freaked out about getting this note for note, because you're not. Just do a lot of your favorite pentatonic licks. All the way down, that'd be my. Uh, down to that note there on the uh, 19th fret of the low E, and then back up. And then into that bend of the 21st fret on the uh, G string ends it. So we just. So he's kind of doing some picking. When he gets to the, past the G string, you really hear him start really muting and doing a lot of alternate picking. But like I said, it's just it's kind of erratic, random. So we have this now, the next. All right, so that lick is pretty repeated, but what, are we, what you're gonna hear if you really slowed it down, you hear him doing a pull off 17 to 14 to 12, repeated. But you'll also hear that open high E string in there like this. You hear that? So it's in there, I don't know if it's intentional, but. And then he'll, a couple times he'll go over to the B string real quick and pull off 17 to 14. Maybe that's when the high E ha 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 pops in there. So, And at the very end, he moves everything over to the B string and does that pull off like three times. The 17, 14, 12 on the B. Into a bend at the 17th fret on the B string. So we have this. And then it's like a little work out there. And that, that bend there ends that section. The next section looks like this. So we have some double stops here uh, at the ninth fret on the G and the B. And then the seventh fret on the G and the B. And then over the ninth fret on the D. And then we. We go back into that riff that we did earlier. We kind of start the solo with. You do it a couple times. And then you pull off 9 to 7, over to 9 on the D, and then hammer back to 7 to 9. And then it comes back up to here. Kind of just around us. Really just an F sharp minor pentatonic if you want to look at it. And it just says some legato licks around those notes. So 14 and 17 on the high E and the B, and 16 and 14 on the G. So just mess around those notes. Might make it down to that 16 on the D, and then. Once again, it's going to end it there at the 16th fret bend. All right, so like, like I said, there's a lot of licks in here that you're not going to get note for note, but you get, as long as you know what he's, what he's going for, you'll be able to make it sound just like what he's doing. Um, and then when we have the succinct, like, melodic lines and repeated licks, we can do those. But for all the other stuff, it's just kind of that random rock, uh, like rock blues licks that are uh, kind of uh, being played. So then we go back up high again. Basically, do that the same thing you did before. It's because that's basically all it's doing. All right, so don't, like I said, don't stress it. Then we get to this really cool part. It well, sounds like this. So now we can play that note for note. So we're going to have. So that's 
starting at the 12th fret on the B string, I'm gonna play that hammer on 15, pull back off to 12, over to 14 on the G. Now I'll just move that lick, same lick, that four note lick up, uh, one fret at a time. And when you get to the up here to the, uh, what is that, 18th fret? Does the lick and then hammers back on that 16 and 19th with it. And then we're going to take the lick over to the 14th fret on the high E string. So you're going to do that, hammer on 17, pull back off to 14, and then over to um, the 16 there on the on the B string. So we have now move that up a fret and do that, move it up like. And then you gotta get up here and grab this and that, that 22nd fret bend. So it is. Alright, and then we have this next week. We're, now we go, this is when we're done with the B minor and we switch to A minor. So we have an A minor lick, and this is really high up. I gotta sit awkwardly so I fit into these cameras, so I don't like going up here when I'm filming. But here we go. Looks like this. So we start that with just a, a series, a, a repeated lick. So it's, it's, you know, it goes fast. We have. I'm kind of picking each note there. You can pull off if you want. So it's just 20 pull off to 17. I'm sorry, 22 pull off to 17. Yeah, you might want to do pull offs. And then pull off. 20 to 17, and then 19 to 17. So we have this. And then pick that um, 17 twice. So we have this. And then when you play it the, the next time, it stays the same. Except the last two notes, instead of doing this, we go over here to the 20th fret on the G string. And then back to that note there on the uh, 17th fret on the B. So we had this. The second time through looks like this. So both of them together. One more time. So pretty cool. So he does that whole, so you want to think of that as the lick done once. And then we do it three times. And then we get into a, um, a bend here at the 20th fret there in the high E string, and then we start the A minor. So instead of doing B minor, which is was up two frets, we're down here. So now he really kind of goes off on these kind of uh, legato licks across A minor. So that's two frets lower than the scale we did. Right, so he just starts with A minor, and more of the same, kind of erratic. God looks, you work your way all the way down to that 17th fret on the low E, and work your way back. And this, when you start doing... When we have that, um, we... He's kind of messing around mostly with that little lick between on the uh, the 19th there on the G string and then hammering 20, uh, 17 20 and pull to 20 and then pull back off to 70. And it'll go down to here and then. So he's kind of going up to this top note, then back down, and then the low note. And then you're going to end that with that oblique bend. 
which is holding the 20th fret on the B and then playing the 19th fret on the G string and bending that up with it. That's when there's a little pause and then when we have those two hits at the end, he also does one of those oblique bends. All right, so I know that that solo's got, you know, it's typical a lot of Kirk Hammer stuff where it's kind of blues based licks uh, that are just kind of played warp speed and you just need to get a couple of uh, solid licks underneath your belt and then you can just take them across those scales and you'll sound just like what he does. And what little bits of this solo he still plays live, that's just what he does. He just kind of goes for it. Um, but for the most part, uh, from recent shows, I don't see him perform this solo. He'll, the beginning of it will be similar, and then he just kind of goes off and does his uh, own thing. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Knocked another Metallica one out for you. Uh, we'll see you guys again soon for GuitarLessons365.com. Bye-bye.